So, welcome back to another episode of How Not to Screw Up in Japan with myself, Hiko Simon, and Rochelle Karp from Japan Intercultural Consulting. Uh, Rochelle is actually a bit of an expert on this whole Japanese cult intercultural communication thing, and you've actually written quite a number of books. Correct. And there's an exciting new book coming yes, out. Yes, exactly. The biggest thing since Harry Potter, you wouldn't believe it. It's coming out. <laughs> so, we're going to talk a little bit about the books and. Uh, how, how Rochelle shares some of her knowledge in a way that you guys can get. So, Certainly. Certainly, certainly. So I have a couple books. My first big book in, ja um, in English was called The Rice Paper Ceiling, Breaking Through Japanese Corporate Culture. I like it, The Rice Paper Ceiling. That's Rice Paper good. Ceiling, yeah. And that came out a long time ago, and I'm going to be doing a new edition of it coming up soon, but I keep just doing other things instead, so haven't gotten that done yet. I need that book, actually. That's it. I like it. The rice paper somehow seems a lot friendlier than, than a glass ceiling. Glass ceiling, yeah. It's probably just as hard, actually. Well, you know, the thing is, with rice paper, there's different types of rice paper. And some rice paper is just like tissue paper, and it's really not that bad. Some of it is like Tyvek, yes. and it's just you're never going to get through it, right? right so right. that was what, you know, it's just like, it's, um, there's a lot of variation, and that's one of the things I wanted to get across. Right. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, how many books have you, have you... I've got about 25 books, but most of them are in Japanese. I do a lot of writing for Japanese audiences on how to work with people from other cultures and business English types of books and intercultural things. Oh, wow. Do you, do you yeah. actually write in Japanese? Um, usually I write in Japanese. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So we should be... Oh, you know what? I never actually, I've never had a conversation with you in Japanese before. Okay, we could do that too sometime. Yeah. Well, m maybe even we can throw in a special on this as well. Might okay. be fun to do, actually. Yeah, that would be fun, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, it's almost, actually, of course you can, but it's just you live in America all the time, and I know mm -hmm. that people, even people very knowledgeable in the area, these areas, get a little bit rusty and uncomfortable sometimes. Oh, with the Japanese, I speak Japanese every day with someone, because most of yeah. my clients are Japanese firms, and so I'm always talking with of my course. clients every day. So, wow. so yeah. most of your books are in Japanese. I mean, that's something, I can write emails and, and work in Japanese, mm -hmm. but to write a book or a thesis or something mm -hmm. like that in Japanese is, is still a level above mm -hmm. what, I, what anything I've, I've ever challenged. So that's super mm -hmm. cool. Oh, thanks. So how many English books have you have you? Published? Let's see. So I've got The Rice Paper Ceiling. I've got one that's called Business Etiquette Japan. And that's actually an audio book, but you can get the, t the transcript as a Kindle book. So you can oh, do yeah. it either way. Yeah. And um, actually for English books so far, just those two. Okay. But I have another one coming out. Yeah. I published a book in Japanese in January yeah. called um, Creating Engaged Employees in Japan. Wow. And Good it's topic. been selling really well in Japanese. Yeah. And that one, I actually wrote it in English and then I had someone help me translate, and then I edited the translation because it was just too long and complicated, and I didn't have sure. much time. Sure. So um, I'm gonna. So I wrote the English. So I'm gonna publish the English coming up very soon. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's all about why do Japanese companies have such low productivity and low employee engagement? Okay, I want to stop you right there because that is definitely a stereotype. Whenever you talk with Westerners and they're getting around in Roppongi in the bar and they say, "Yeah, oh, these Japanese people, they look like they're working hard, but they're not really doing anything," is the it's a Cliche. It is a cliche, but if you look at the numbers, um, Japan has the lowest output per hour worked in all of the OECD countries. Okay. And, you know, well, uh, having worked in IT in a Japanese company, uh -huh. uh, this sets off little, there are little missiles going off in my brain <laughs> at the moment. Because, yes, you're right, <laughs> but the point is, is that with a lot of work in a Japanese company, productivity is not the pure objective. Right, it's not. So that you don't get productivity. <laughs> you get other <laughs> well, things that they're looking for. But and there again, you know, we just talked about all those meetings. Well, that's right. And that's a big time waster, right? There's a lot of things that just but aren't the, very efficient. But the thing, well, you're right. It's not efficient, but at the same time, you're not twiddling your thumbs. You, know, you are doing something. You are doing stuff. And that stuff does have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And that stuff, in the end, can lead to a, a better outcome or a more right, solid right. outcome. You could say from a pure you know, efficiency, getting it done as, as quick as possible, getting the most tolerable result in the shortest amount of time perspective. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, it's not very productive, but in the end of the day, is that what you should even be, you know, that, that, right, that right. concept isn't really well sold in Japan no, to no, begin with. That's it not isn't. what work is about. So right. that's a very Western angle. I used to come in and say, well, it's not very productive. And I guess it's not from that perspective, but if you're thinking on that angle and you're working in a Japanese company, you're going to implode after <laughs> right. about a well, year. Well, this is for sure. Yes, that's true. So, 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 okay, accepting for a minute, I mean, I do, you're right, it just, it, uh, uh, yes, you're right, that they're not very productive, but, so what are they doing? 
<laughs> well, well, that's the thing. There's a lot of meetings. There's yes. a lot of this horen, um, nemuashi, and there's also horenso. Which spinach. Is not, yes. Well, it's not really spinach. Oh. But it's a, a Japanese pun on spinach. Yes. <laughs> um, hokoku spinach can renraku well. sodan. So it's um, reporting, touching base, and discussing. Yeah. And so this is what Japanese, you know, every Japanese person in their new employee training yeah. gets told how to do horenso. And it involves a lot of one on one discussions with your boss at basically every step of whatever it is you're working on. Yeah. So none of that, take the ball and run with it and show me when you're done that we get in the US. That initiative, crazy hippie stuff, yes. The, well, yes, in different degrees, of course, but yeah, right, right. yeah, no, definitely. So, okay, so, so the, the result of that, though, I've got a fundamental question. So, so question that is kind of, this is something I struggled with myself when I was uh -huh. working for my first three years in a Japanese company. What motivates Japanese people when they work? They're, they're, they're mm. working there all night. They're not seeing their families. They've got you know, all of the stress and all of this lack of productivity. You're talking about creating engaged Japanese employees. Mm -hmm. What do you think motivates Japanese employees? Well, you know, it depends a lot on the person, obviously. But unfortunately, far too many Japanese are motivated by fear. That's an interesting one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if I don't, if I don't work these long hours then I'm not going to do well in the company and I won't get ahead and I'm going to look bad and my family's going to be disappointed or, no. you know, as things are getting worse, I might be asked to leave. And so there's a lot of fear or, or I just even fear that like my boss will yell at me because there's a lot of yelling bosses around here. There are a lot of yelling bosses, yes. yes. I, yeah, yeah, I can see fear. So you think fear, fear is a main motivator of workers? So you're well, for writing a, a lot of people, a lot of people. So when you're writing a book on creating motivated employees, you're, you're recommending perhaps the use of fear as a tool for No, 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 it's I'm doing them. the opposite. I'm oh, doing oh. the opposite. Sorry, I completely misunderstood. <laughs> I, I would have read that book, How to Terrorize Your Japanese Employees. Now, other well, lots of other people have written that book, and except not in English, but there's tons of those like that in Japanese. Oh, really? Yeah. Buka no Shikari Kata, oh. uh, How to Scold Your Subordinates. There's tons of books like that in you Japanese know bookstores. I'm going to buy that book, and I'm just going to leave it on my desk at work just to intimidate people to come up to my desk. <laughs> that would be actually pretty, pretty funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so you're, you're from the hug them, not scare them school of HR, obviously. Um, so, well, something like that. Actually, I'm maybe a little bit in between, because the other thing, I think Japanese companies completely lack progressive discipline. And so, mm. you know, okay. because yeah. in Japan, you, it's very hard to fire people. Absolutely. And so in the U.S., if you have someone who's not performing, you start off, you give them a verbal warning. Yeah. Then if they still don't improve, then you give them a written warning. Yeah. And then you put them on a performance improvement plan. You might give them a coach <laughs> or a mentor. Yeah. You know, and then there's a probation period. And if after all of this, you know, they've clearly gotten the message that there's problems with their performance. Yeah. And if they still haven't improved, then at some point you say, it's time for us to part ways. And in Japan, you can't really have that last step very easily. So there's none of these steps in between. And I think Japanese companies need to tell people who have problems that they're not doing well and they have to shape up. That's interesting. I mean, do you not think that the, in its own ways, I mean, all people to some extent are motivated by some sort of fear, right? Right. In yeah. America, people have crushing student loans that they're afraid right, of, you right, know, right. having thought, their yeah. houses repossessed. They've got all these kind of expectations right. and weight of things. And in America, it is actually a real possibility that you could be fired. Exactly. Whereas in yeah. Japan, you could say no matter how bad it gets and no matter how bad the boss is shouting, I'm a seishain, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm okay. I'm, yeah. I'm when, and see, I, actually, I think we they need to get rid of the seishain system. Oh, that's a, so you're, you're you're challenging my Leninist. Uh, well, actually, no, I'm not. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a controversial statement at the moment. It's very because, controversial. Yes. Because that is that is something that's under a lot of scrutiny and debate. People talk, but they're 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 amending the temp staffing law at the moment. Right. Right. And everyone's saying, and in fact, uh, Hazel Takenaka, the mm -hmm. guy who created the fir the first temp staffing law, and right, the idea right. of non Seishain are formal, right. basically life employees. Right. Well, you're, 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 safe. you're safe. You're safe. You're safe. Yeah. You're and not going to get fired. And he created the first idea because of the economic decline in Japan, the idea of having these uh, temp workers so that right. so companies could have some flexibility with part of their workforce on right. a temporary basis right. uh, as needed so that they could protect the, protect the, 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 the lifetime employees. But Hazel Takenaka himself, actually, a couple of months ago, came out and said, he yeah, said which, yeah, well, everybody should be at risk, you know, yeah. which is what at the and, time... And people freaked out when he said that, yes. And people but I completely out. agree. So, okay, well, why, why do you think... Well, because I think what happens is, is that the people, you know, on one hand, lifetime employment sounds really nice. You're never going to get fired. You're secure. Yeah. On the other hand, 
The flip side of lifetime employment is that people are virtually slaves to their company. That your company can tell you to do any kind of work it wants. Yeah. It can tell you to work anywhere it wants you to work. Yeah. And if you say, no, I won't do that, it has grounds to fire you. It breaks the Seychelles contract. So basically, employees have to do whatever they are told, whether mm. you know, they don't want to go move to Niigata or they don't want to go to oh, accounting. They wouldn't want to move to Niigata. <coughs> don't, right. don't go to Niigata. Yes. yes. No. Oh, in fact, yeah, I, I know a guy who was uh, looking for a new job because he was assigned to Myanmar. Um, mm. So <coughs> definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Definitely. You are. Uh, this is very Showa. This is very uh, up to 1988 Japan. You know, right. the, old, the old school where everyone was Seishain and everyone right. was the, the worker, the foot soldier for the company thing. Right. And that cycle is very, very much being broken at the moment. It's being broken. But although what I find is I deal with a lot of very large Japanese companies. And yeah. for the core employees of those large Japanese companies, they're still back in the Showa period in sure. terms of how they think of things. Sure. Yeah. But so I don't understand still. Though. Okay. So they're not slaves anymore. They can switch jobs. Although people are free to switch jobs if they want to switch jobs anyway, technically. Yeah. Right. The problem is there's not much of a labor market. So the idea is that getting rid of the Seishine thing would free up the labor market. Yeah, exactly. But do you think Japanese society wants that? It's a good question. Yeah, I say, well, I think, well, I think the, the, what I can say for sure is that Japanese society is definitely not ready for it. Because mm. most Japanese individuals will have no idea how to survive in a labor market because they aren't able to articulate what their strengths are yeah. and why someone should hire them yeah. and could not put together a resume or survive in an interview because they can't they don't have a sense of how they fit in a market. Yeah. And so until you can get to that point, it's going to be very hard to do. Yeah. Um, so these arguments that you make in your book? Yes, these are things I talk about. And these are ideas for tra training and working with Japanese people, developing, or what, what's um, the Well, it's really the book. Um, the way it came about is yeah. I got a request from a Japanese publisher yeah. who was interested in looking at why are Japanese not productive. And also, Japanese are very low on all of the engagement um, surveys. Yeah. There's all these Western um, consulting firms that do the engagement surveys, and Japan's always at the bottom. I only learned the term engagement, actually, like a year or two ago, actually. Mm -hmm. And we, I didn't know what they were talking about. But yes, mm -hmm. I'm getting yeah. used to these Western consulting concepts. Right, right. Right. It's, it's definitely a, a purely a Western consulting concept, but it's, I think it's a really interesting one because yeah. it, it encompasses job satisfaction, but it goes one step more into, are you excited about your job? Yeah, Do yeah. you care about your job? Do you feel passionate about your job? And Japanese Even are, asking a Japanese person that question, it's like, I don't understand that question. Well, there's kind of issues with that. I mean, there yeah. are some cultural issues that Japanese tend to be very... Um, you know, uh, hikai mei, they sort of yeah. uh, put themselves low when they, when they answer surveys like that. So you have to take the sur with a grain of salt. Yeah. But still, it's so consistently that Japanese are low. But this is right? so cool. And this is something, again, which in my work comes up mm -hmm. all the time. And I get asked, what's the engagement like with the Japanese team? Uh, uh -huh. What can we do to improve engagement? Because we did a survey and the scores were really low. Right, and what right, do we right, do? Exactly. Yeah. And it happens yeah. a lot in Western firms, right? And yeah. I'm constantly trying to think of ideas. I don't know, a big pachinko field trip for everybody, or something like. <laughs> yeah. So you've got tips for me, basically, on improving engagement or how to yeah. how to tackle that problem of your engagement scores in the Japan office. Right. Exactly. And so um, we actually we get asked this a lot in our Japan branch right, from yeah, companies that have exactly that thing. And so we do do a lot of team buildings for that purpose. That's cool. Yeah, and we find that that does help a lot. Okay. Yeah. So that's cool. That was a long one, but I think it's worthwhile. So what is the book title going to be? Okay, Creating Engaged Employees in Japan. Creating Engaged Employees in Japan, uh, featured here on How Not to Screw Up in Japan. So, you know, it's vouched for in the best way yes. possible. Uh, we're going to keep making more episodes for the series. That was a bit of a long one, but seriously, I'm going to buy like, uh, just, just even hearing that just now. Oh. I know like 10 people I can buy that book for actually. So okay, great. <laughs> awesome. And from an expert. So that's pretty cool. So yes, hang around. We're going to do some, some more episodes. So uh, see you soon.